Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Micron Insight 2019. Brought to you by Micron. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. We're here at Pier 27. The sun is setting behind the, the buildings in San Francisco. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, David Floyer. We've been here all day covering Micron Insight 2019. Tom Evey is here. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Compute and Networking Business Unit at Micron. Tom, great to see you again. Great to see you. So you got Compute and Networking, two of the big three in, <laughs> your, in your business unit. There you go. But we're going to talk about 3D Crosspoint today, but so anyway, you know. Ab we're, absolutely. We're, we're kind of bringing you outside the swim lane, or maybe not, but no, tell, us, no, tell us about your BU and what, sure. what's been, I mean, what's we, been we, new, we, what's the update? Yeah, I mean, so we, you know, we, we sell uh, primarily uh, memory today, uh, DRAM, uh, although in the future uh, we see 3D Crosspoint as a great opportunity, uh, into the, the data center, you know, both traditional servers and the, and the cloud players, uh, PCs, graphics, and networking. Yeah, so uh, you got some hard news today. Uh, why don't we dig into that a little bit? We sure. really haven't covered much of it, but okay. uh, why don't you take okay. it Okay, absolutely, there. yeah, so I, I guess uh, you know, a couple, couple things of interest, probably uh, most directly, is we, uh, we announced our, our first uh, 3D Crosspoint uh, storage device. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's the highest performance uh, SSD in the world, uh, and offers, compared to uh, other uh, 3D Crosspoint-based solutions on the market, uh, you know, anywhere from three and a half to five times the performance on a range of uh, both uh, sequential and uh, random reads and writes. Uh, two and a half million IOPS, uh, bandwidth uh, read and write north of uh, nine gigabytes a second. And, uh, um, so and super fast. Super fast, yeah, <laughs> super fast. And you know, similar, similar uh, uh, you know, uh, very positive comparisons uh, up, against, uh, up against NAND SSDs. Okay. And so, and so we're excited about that. So where's the fit? What are the use cases? Who are you targeting with this? Sure. Yeah, I mean, so I think, you know, the one way to think about it is that any time you introduce a new layer into the memory and storage hierarchy, you know, historically it was SRAM caches and then it was SSDs going in between DRAM and, and rotating media, and now this is uh, 3D Crosspoint sitting in between uh, DRAM and, uh, and NAND. And, and the reason it is a, a benefit in terms of another layer is it's you know, higher density and, and greater persistence than DRAM. Uh, it's greater performance and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, it, can, it can cycle uh, greater endurance than, uh, than NAND. And, and when you do that, you do nibble away at either side uh, mm -hmm. of that layer. So in this case, it nibbles away a little bit from DRAM and a little bit from NAND, but it grows the overall pie and is the only player in the industry that provides uh, DRAM, 3D Crosspoint, and NAND. Uh, we think that's a great opportunity. Add some color to the economics, because it's more expensive than NAND, less expensive than, than DRAM, higher performance than, than, than traditional flash, sure. right? lower performance, well, well under the performance of, of yeah. DRAM, so. Yeah, I mean, so again, I think you know, the, 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 you know, the benefits, like I said, is it's, it, it offers greater density, and it offers greater persistence than DRAM, and so that's the advantage there. Um, and it offers uh, much greater performance on things like bandwidth and IOPS, um, and much greater endurance uh, than, uh, than NAND. And certainly our, our preliminary results are um, in, uh, in applications like uh, databases, uh, in certain uh, AI and machine learning workloads, and in uh, workloads that, uh, that benefit from low latency. Uh, I think financial service markets is, a, is one specific example. Um, you know, we think there's a good value prop there. So, right. so a, a Colombo question, if I may. Yeah. So SAP would say, no, throw, throw everything in memory in, in HANA. And of course, sell a DRAM and say, okay, that's okay with us. Sure. So you mentioned databases. How should we think about this relative to in-memory databases? Sure, I mean, I, I think that um, if, if you can afford it, um, and of course it will be more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to provide you know, our highest density DRAM modules on the, on the highest end server platforms um, and you know, put, uh, put you, know, you mentioned uh, you know, a HANA database um, into terabytes and terabytes of DRAM. That would be great. Um, that is, um, is not free. If it were um, free, you'd do it. Right, exactly. And, uh, and so if, if you have the need for that performance, that's what you'll do. Uh, but we, we see there's a, you know, a, 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 an attractive range of workloads mm -hmm. that cannot afford um, you know, the, sure. the cost of mm -hmm. that very high-end solution. And so this affords something that, um, that gives uh, you know, good benef uh, benefits in database uh, performance, uh, but at a, a slightly more economic Great. solution. All right, I know you want to jump in, go. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I, if we compare yourself with Intel, which has obviously got the same uh, mm -hmm. raw technology, they have gone for consumer type Optane 
uh, SSDs, mm -hmm. but they put all their effort into combining it with a DV, uh, oh, no, no, no. NVIDIA uh, and have combined that with the uh, processor itself mm -hmm. and, and made a combination which is very good for storage uh, mm -hmm. controllers. Yeah. Um, so the, the question, and you've done very well in, in, in the SSD, much, much, much more than they have. Uh -huh. Are you looking to go into that NVDIM? Uh, because you obviously you don't have the processors themselves to, uh, sure. to, to, to manage. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be clear, the, um, you know, what we're offering today you know, is a product that runs on you know, standard NVMe, um, PCIe yeah. NVMe, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, while there may in the future be opportunities to further enhance performance with software optimization, it runs you know, out of the box Absolutely. Uh, yeah. without any software Straight. optimization. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, but I, I do think that you know, um, there are opportunities uh, both to use this technology in uh, you know, more of a storage type of configuration, um, and, and looking forward, uh, there are uh, also opportunities to use it in a, in a memory configuration. Um, you know, what, what, uh, what we're announcing today is our, is our first storage yeah, product, first and yeah. with regard to additional products, you know, stay tuned. So if I think about yeah. the storage hierarchy, you know, the, the, the classical pyramid, and, and forget about, let, let's, let's focus on the persistent uh, end of uh -huh. that, that, that spectrum. Yeah. Um, this is at the tip. Right, is that how we should think about this, or not necessarily? I mean, it, it is at the storage tip, Yes, but I think we tend to think a little bit more holistically mm -hmm. that, you know, that that triangle mm -hmm. um, extends from, you know, from DRAM, um, traditionally to SSDs, to rotating, and we're now inserting um, a, a 3D cross point based layer in between. And, and so from that perspective, it is, it is the tip of the storage yes. triangle, right. uh, but it does sit below, um, it does sit below DRAM right. so in, the, in the overall. The, and the reason for my question was, yeah. was sort of a loaded question, because if you eliminate the, 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 the DRAM piece, now you've got that tip. So NAND benefits from the, vo the volume of consumer. Uh, thoughts on um, how you get volume with 3D Crosspoint? Sure. Um, you know, again, I think um, uh, there are uh, you know at a at a lower performance point, um, you know, you can get higher density, um, uh, you know, more cost-effective storage solutions with NAND. Mm -hmm. um, and we certainly don't see you know NAND going away. We're we're quite bullish on that. We yeah, you like NAND. We announced, <laughs> we announced you know we announced both a uh, both a SATA and a uh, NVMe. Uh, 96 layer uh, TLC NAND based yep. uh, products today. So Very nice. you know, that's, that yeah. continues to be a major area of investment. Um, but um, you know, from, a, uh, you know, from, a, uh, from a value and opportunity point of view, um, we see a better opportunity you know, applying this technology again into this layer in the, um, uh, you know, in, the, in the server or data center hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as opposed to what one might be able to do in the consumer space. And your OEMs so are saying bring we're... it on, right? I mean, they, they want this, uh, we're talking about the server manufacturers, you know, data center, Yeah, I mean, I, I think cloud uh, you know, guys. We're, we're in, you know, we're in, uh, we're in limited sampling with select customers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, more to say about our go-to-market, um, you know, at a, uh, at a future date. Okay. Uh, but certainly we, we see that there is, uh, you know, we're, we're bullish about the opportunity in the marketplace. So, just uh, asking a question about volume again. Sure. You, if you look at the marketplace, it's ARM has been incredibly successful and has driven a huge amount of uh, memory and and uh, NAND for yourself. Uh huh. Um, th and that seems to be where the volume is growing m much faster than most other platforms. Uh huh. Are you looking to use this technology, 3D Crosspoint, as in, in, in that environment, uh, it, as even memory, as, as in DRAM itself, as memory itself, um, at, at a much lower level. I'm just thinking of ways that you could increase volume. Sure, mm -hmm. I mean, so to be, um, just, just to be clear, you're talking about what's driven overwhelmingly by, by the cell phone market. Mm -hmm. Correct. Obviously yeah. it's, it's proliferating into IOT and, and IoT automotive and, and lots of others, else. yes. 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 Um, you know, uh, I guess again, our, our, uh, our, our view of the, of the first and best opportunity is in the data center, uh, which uh, is still today uh, uh, an x86 dominated world. Sure. Sure. Um, I, I would say, um, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, of opportunities, like I said, for you know, memory-based solutions in the data center, um, and, and for how we apply this in other areas, um, you know, stay tuned. 
Uh, let's talk about this forward next acquisition. So it's really yeah. interesting to see Micron making moves in, in AI. Mm -hmm. uh, wh why the acquisition? Tell us more about it. Sure, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a small, uh, small startup, uh, you know, handful of, of players, although uh, you know, fairly experienced. As, uh, as I believe Sanjay mentioned, they're on their, their fifth generation of their architecture. Um, and so what we've acquired, it's both a, it's both a hardware architecture that uh, currently runs on FPGAs, along with the supporting software that supports all the common uh, frameworks, the TensorFlows, the, the PyTorches, um, as well as the uh, a, a range of the network architectures um, you know, that, that are necessary to uh, support, again, primarily on the inference side. Uh, you know, our, our, we, we see the best opportunities in, in edge inferencing. But in terms of, of what's behind the acquisition, uh, first of all, there is, there's an explosion of opportunity in, in machine learning. We see that in particular um, on, uh, you know, on edge inferencing. And we feel that in order for us to continue to, to optimize and develop the best solutions, uh, both overall uh, of, a, of a deep learning uh, platform that includes memories, but also just memories that are best optimized, we need to understand, you know, we need to understand the workloads, we need to understand the best solutions. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why we made this acquisition. We integrated it with uh, our team that has uh, for some time developed uh, FPGA based add-in cards, and that's actually the basis of the technology for uh, some of the dialogue that you saw, for example, with OHSU. When you, when you talk about ed edge inferencing, we're envisioning this sort of massively scalable, distributed system uh -huh. um, that of course comprises edge. Mm -hmm. You want to bring the compute to the data wherever the data lives, obviously you don't want to start moving data around. Now you're bringing AI to that data, which is the yeah. data, yeah. data yeah. AI, cloud, all these superpowers coming together. Uh -huh. So our, our premise is that the inferencing is going to be done at the edge. Much, much of the data, if not most of the data, is going to stay at the edge. Yeah. And so this is what you're enabling through that so integration. It's correct, so it's it's a heterogeneous combination of technologies. <laughs> That, Correct. That, right. I mean, you know, to to use the extreme example that we talked about, you know, on stage earlier, um, you know, CERN has mm. this massive amount of information that comes from the, I think it's 40 million collisions a second, or, or mm. I, 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 I may have my fingers wrong, and you cannot possibly uh, store, nor do you want to transmit that data, Anywhere. and and so yeah. you you have to be applying AI to figure True. out what yeah. the good stuff is, yeah. and, in, and in that, the stream itself, exactly, yeah. and that solution exists. Um, uh, in a, a myriad of applications. Um, you know, the, the very you know, simplistic one, um, you're not going to send you know, the picture of who's at your front door you know, yeah. to a core data center to figure out if it's somebody in your family. Yeah, right? Right, you're yeah. going to want to be doing that, <laughs> maybe not in the camera, but certainly a lot closer, because yeah. yeah. you just, the, you know, the network simply will not, uh, can't handle the capacity. All right, we got to go, but, okay. uh, but last word. You know, what, what are the takeaways from today? What do you want our audience to, to remember from this event? Well, I think, um, you know, I think it's just we, we continue to um, uh, build on our memory and storage base to, to move up the stack and, and add values in a way that may be storage subsystems like our, our NAND SSD and 3D Crosspoint. Uh, that you know I'll go a little further up the stack in terms of, of our gaining greater expertise in uh, you know machine learning solutions or or the example with Authenta of uh, providing you know a, a broader uh, solution including key management for how we secure uh, the billions of devices that are going to be at the edge. Touching all the bases, Tom. All right, congratulations okay. <laughs> on all the uh, the hard work, and it was great to see you again. Thanks okay, for coming likewise, on. Okay, likewise, Dave and Dave. All thank right, you. great. And keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap Micron Insight 2019 right after this short break from San Francisco. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>